This is a Formula Ford. It's in fact the first Formula Ford that ever existed. It's the Russell Alexis MK14, and it was developed specifically for teaching young drivers how to race. Now, prior to these cars being introduced, younger drivers would race older Formula 2, Formula 3 cars with engines fitted, but those engines increasingly became harder to maintain and would break down easily being older. So the whole idea was to design a car which had a cheap engine, and so they took Ford engines out of Cortina's and other Ford makes and fitted them to a chassis. And this chassis was the first purpose-built for this. Uh, the Russell Alexis, where does it get its name? Well, it's the Russell Driving School that it was designed for and it was actually a short run automobile I believe only something like 50 in total were ever produced but it set a standard for future cars to mimic and oh have they mimicked them Formula Ford is one of the biggest classes of racing worldwide still every year at Brands Hatch where it all began with the Russell Driving School there are big Formula Ford meets and some important races that many stars have come through this car was specifically designed to compete against the Lotus 51 which was a conversion of the Lotus 31 uh, and that car had a lot of issues with the gearbox Box. And so this car's main claim to fame was that it was ultra reliable and instantly younger drivers fell in love with them. There was concern that younger drivers wouldn't want a car that didn't have a true quote racing engine, but nobody cared. These were all equal, very competitive. You could get your racing fix and learn how to become a good driver with one of these cars. So like I said, this is a mod for Assetto Corsa and it's made by a user named Stereo who has a lot of mods over at Race Department. But this one specifically has that extra touch. I love a mod that comes with some historical information about the car and about when it came out, all the stuff I'm sharing with you right now. As you can probably tell, the attention to detail in this car is very good and it not only looks the part, but it drives really well. I have to thank G652 for reminding me about this car and I've had great fun taking it on some of the different tracks that a set of Corsa has. But today I'm here at Hockenheim and I'm racing the national layout of Hockenheim. This is Hockenheim 67 by Sergio Loro, the same author who made the Sudschleife that I've reviewed and the different Formula Junior cars that I've also taken a look at. And this track's just another amazingly well done track. The full Hockenheim layout is obviously amazing, but for a car like this, you really want a small, tight circuit. So something like Hockenheim National, which is quite similar to the current F1 layout, is absolutely perfect. So I'm going to take this car out for a 12 lap race against the AI. I want to go a little longer with it and just see how it develops over the length of the race. So here we are at the back of the grid at Hockenheim. Field of 18 cars, lights will light up. Out, we're underway. Everybody gets wheel spin off the line. Quite realistic, honestly, for the 60s, but now we'll come down to turn one. Take it nice and easy here off the line. Third gear, just come around the outside. A couple guys will clip the grass, no doubt. Just put the car into the runoff and now throttle towards a right-hander here. Put it down to second gear. Oh, the car's in front going off a little bit. Let's see if I can sneak up the inside. There we go. Dirt being kicked into my face. The car is quite easy to bog down on lower revs, but it does get going. The car's going to come up the inside, come down to third gear. Oh, he's going to swing out wide onto the grass. Don't want to do that there. Come down to second gear then. For the top of the circuit, this is where we rejoin the longer track. And now we get to go through the stadium section. A full crowd here today to see some Formula Ford racing. See if I can come up the inside down a second, try not to lock up the tires. See a puff in front of car out wide. See if I can sneak up the inside through the chicane. Then all kinds of sideways over the dirt just a little bit and then into the final corner to complete lap one of 12. So this car has an amazing feeling to it. P14 here. I've got Eamon in front of me actually. It actually took a little bit to drive or learn how to drive. Pretty easy to spin out turning into corners and they're Comes, uh, this car comes with two different tire compounds. So I'm gonna catch up to these guys in front. Oh, and I have a car coming around the outside. 
two different tire compounds. The Mod Authors released modern tires as well as vintage 60, 60s tires because these cars are still raced in vintage meets with Formula Ford so you can pop on some modern tires and it feels totally different but I'm, I'm racing with the 60s tires today which are much more slidey and they're impossible to get up to any kind of temperature. Nose it through here, close up on Eamon in front. Love how you can see the axle spinning. I don't know if the video will catch that up. Lock in front, I'm running a little bit wide. Over the dirt there. Come out of the final corner, complete another lap, see if I can get a good run on this guy towards the first corner. Dipping out, all gonna depend on who's better on the brakes, looks like he is. This car is all about momentum. A lot of the skills, if any of you race the Skip Barber in iRacing, it's a lot of the same skills, but less downforce on this. And I wanna say a little more power, although I'm not sure. It might just be that the car is lighter, but it's very nimble. And so for a tight track like this one, it's, it fits perfectly. Down a second here, long right-hander. Just want to get the power on all the time, but it's really easy to slip the car there. Get off into the weeds, do a little mowing. So we'll come through the chicane again, use as much of the curbing as possible. Oh, the car's gonna run wide in front, see if I can dip up the inside into the final corner. Run all the way to the curb, force him out wide. Do a little block fade to the inside, but making the pass there. Hopefully he doesn't try to come back on me into T1. Try not to lock or spin or anything. Oh, right to the edge of the curb there. Oh, I'm gonna run onto the pavement, onto the dirt. Pulling it back together onto the circuit though, so just as quickly as I gained it, losing that position. Down a second gear, nose it through here, top of the track. This car just seems to reward the harder you race, but you have to stay within a limit. I have to try to drive the car like I want it to understeer. Probably something that could be tuned a bit with setup, but I love how the car feels. It's very progressive, and as long as I'm trying to make a pass here, whoa, as long as you keep within those bounds, you can really drive the hell out of this thing. Coming to the final corner, I think I got around him there. We'll take the apex. Cars in front running wide. So what do we got? Eight laps to go up to P13. Lucky number 13 here. Oh, hard on the brakes there. Car in front luckily leaves the inside open for me. to say the more and more <laughs> it's gonna come back on the inside there's no way to go too wide through there my god I have to say the more I play with the Assetto Corsa AI and the more I learn their quirks the more fun I'm having they fit I've said this in other videos but they fit so well with these lesser formulas because they do make mistakes as I jump onto the dirt there every few corners every few laps but it fits the cars quite well Get it up to third gear, yeah, through the chicane now. Over the dirt there, using all the track. Two in front have a dispute there, slows them up in the last corner. Let's see if I can get a good slipstream down the main straightaway. 
out a little early. This guy's line's gonna be compromised on the inside. Oh, there's gonna be nowhere to go. <laughs> They're battling side by side. There we go, around the outside becomes the inside. to spin the car out under the brakes there. I think I could maybe move the brake bias up a little bit, but as long as you're gentle on that pedal, it's not too bad. So picking up a few positions after you get a few laps under our belts. Seems like this black car with the blue wheels in front's holding up everybody a little bit. Let's see if I can maximize the final corner here. Oh, yellow car's gonna slide wide, me as well. Absolutely don't wanna make contact in an open wheel car like this. But able to get around him, we'll come to the first corner. He might be on the inside of me though. Oh, he is. Come back on him. Up the road here. Oh, hard on the brakes. Gonna run wide again. Down a second gear. We'll just ease our way around here. It's very easy to overdrive. I have to constantly remind myself to just stay within the limits of the car. But it's the type of car it is. It teaches you to respect the limits of a car. So it was absolutely designed to do this thing that it's doing. So I'm going to be able to make the pass here up the inside. There we go. So just one more car before there's a lot of open track. wide seems to be the norm today for everybody oh wheel to wheel there I think he went off the track no he's kept on it so we'll run over the line side by side five laps to go down a third for the first corner oh, just there to able to carry more speed around the outside from me down a second Car gets a little squirrely under braking. His does too, though. Not gonna give up the position that easy. Oh, just running into the back of him there. That was definitely my fault. Getting away with it, though. That would most certainly be race over in the real race. Punctured radiator at a minimum, but luckily able to carry on. So we'll fling it through the chicane towards the end of the lap. gear through all these corners, no need to do unnecessary shifting. Come across the line, just four laps to go, so I'm up to P10 from I think 18th on the grid. But this is not about racing for position, I just love setting up the cars on tracks like this and just having some good racing whenever I want it. would, however, like to get around this car. So just try to keep it nice and tidy. I think I'm quicker if I can just keep my racing line straight <laughs> running right to the edge of the track there. Come around the bend into the stadium. Down to second gear. Trying to get on the throttle, but 
spinning the car a little bit. Let's see if I can rejoin the circuit here. Oh, just cutting off the car behind. Very dangerous re-entry, but I had very little control over it. So gathering it back up, a couple bad mistakes for myself. But it's all about learning. So we'll do three laps to go, see if I can close the gap once again. Lock of the brakes in front. Oh, I get the car all kinds of sideways. You can get this car into spins, which is which just aren't savable. But that usually means you did something wrong, like overdrive it. Although it's got the 1000cc Formula Ford or Ford engine in it, you still gotta be careful with that right foot. I think it's the lack of downforce in the car and just how light the chassis is overall, how grippy the tires are, but you can't just mash the gas in this thing. There's a lot of progressive throttle, which is great to learn for cars of this time. You think about when you make the leap up to a Formula 2 or Formula 1 car, the throttle control is everything. All right, running through the last corner, I've closed up quite nicely on the car in front, just a couple laps to go, I believe. even regret doing the short version of the circuit you can look down the straightaway there that we just turned off of and see the walls of trees and awesome straight lines but for a car like this having the twisty roads really provides a better race the smaller tighter circuits are perfect for a car like this where you don't ever quite hit top speed oversteer coming out of the corner there, holding station with the car in front. Oh, he's going to lock the brakes in front of me. I'm running a bit deep as well, see if I can cut the apex late. Getting oversteer there, catching it this time, not going for the ride through the grass. Both gonna run a bit wide there, clip the dirt. This is the faster line after all. Oh, I'm very quick through the final corner, closing right up to him with one lap to go. So where to make the move? Down a third, we'll just coax it through the first corner. See if I can get back on the gas, using all the available runoff. Oh, he's gonna run really deep here. knows how to work the tires a little bit better. Down a third, runs a little wide. I feel like I could go a bit deeper here. But don't want to try anything new on the last lap. Oh, I'm gonna touch the dirt there. But getting a good apex into the stadium section. Just a few more corners left. Down a second gear. There we go, getting a good exit. Come through the chicane. Uh, but there's not a lot of places to pass here. Oh, we're both gonna run wide. Ah, oh, it spins out. I make contact with him. See if I can gather it up quickly here. Ah, oh, car's going by. Trying to rejoin the circuit a little better than I did last time, <laughs> but final corner, I went for it. It just wasn't there. It'll cross the line. So not the cleanest race I've done, but how is that for AI in a sim? I don't think I've ever really had as good of battles as I've been having with the AI in a set of Corsa, especially with these lower powered cars. I think they suit the coating of the AI for a set of Corsa just right. 
and allow you to have some pretty believable battles. This Formula Ford is a must try. I'll leave the link to download in the description as well as the link to Hockenheim here, but any of these tighter tracks work really well for the Formula Ford and uh, can give you some great racing action. It's no wonder many that went for a track day in one of these ended up becoming amateur racing drivers themselves. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope my mistakes didn't put you off too bad, but I'm having great fun with these cars. I think I'm actually gonna go load up the Sooch life of myself right now. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all again next time.